Hello everybody, this is Joseph P. Farrell with News and Views from the Nefarium on Thursday, October 27th, 2022. Can you believe that, folks? We're already through the month of October in 2022. What a disastrous year it has been. Um, and <laughs> more bad news in today's News and Views ahead. But first, let me take care of the housekeeping. I have had to move the vid chat from tomorrow to Monday. That will be Halloween, Monday, this uh, Monday, October 31st. I'm going to have that at 2.30 U.S. Central Time. The deadline still applies. Get your comments and questions in no later than 10 o'clock U.S. Central Time tonight. I've had to move it because they're expecting rain tomorrow and Thursday, or pardon me, Saturday. So I don't want to take the chance that this is going to turn into something severe and have to leave right in the middle of recording the vid chat. So the vid chat's been moved to Monday, uh, Halloween. That'll be at 2.30 p.m. U.S. Central Time. Now, there's been so much going on lately that I really don't even know where to begin or how to comment. It's just getting impossible to keep up with the insanity of the Western political leadership class. We've seen the resignation of Prime Minister Liz Truss in the United Kingdom and the installation of, I believe, the Secretary of the Treasury in that country, Sunak. Uh, to me, this man, I have to be terribly honest with everybody here, this man looks like another creature of the Davos Great Reset crowd. Um, there's There does not appear to be anything, to me, anything left at all, at least at the leadership or upper echelons of the British Conservative Party, of the old Thatcherite wing of that party, that certainly would not be going along with all of this global loneism. Uh, so this Sunak character, uh, I think we're going to have to watch very carefully. The other big thing that happened this last week, and again, I'm not even getting to today's main story yet. I'm just letting you know that I've been watching all these other stories, and there's so many of them, it's, it's very difficult to get a handle on where all this is going. But the other big story, of course, was the Chinese Communist Party Congress and there was a very, very interesting event that took place there. And uh, a friend of ours here on this website has given me his take, and I think his take is essentially correct, and I'll be sharing that. Xi made a point at the party congress to have his chief rival, Hu Xintao, escorted out of the congress hall itself, physically escorted out. And apparently a, a bit of a theater was concocted to give Mr. Shintao the wrong list of people or members or something. I don't remember exactly what, but anyway, she's chief rival, Hu Shintao, was escorted out of the Communist Party Congress. And it's worth noting that Hu had been a advocate of working out the differences with Taiwan diplomatically. In other words, allowing allowing the one China policy just sort of to evolve or grow together. Now, this may sound like a pipe dream. It is really not because the, the business ties between Taiwan and the mainland are quite strong. As everybody knows, Taiwan has a huge semiconductor computer chip industry, uh, the other thing that most people do not know is that to this day, in mainland China, there's kind of a very quiet, very secretive uh, support. I, I, I fall short of calling it a cult. But there is a quiet kind of nostalgia support for the Kuomintang, in other words, for the regime of Chiang Kai-shek that, that basically started the Taiwanese government. So there's a lot going on in the background. Now, she, by doing this, has removed his principal rival, and he has kept the way open for a military resolution of the Taiwanese problem. I do not, at this point, expect that that is going to go anywhere because China 
is also in the middle of a major banking crisis. Now, we all know that wars are a favorite way for banksters to get out of the financial mess that they've put everybody else in. Uh, I think in this instance, though, it may be a, a asking a bit too much to have China try to weather a banking crisis simply through a military solution of Taiwan, because the war simply would not be big enough to resolve the financial mess that it looks like the Chinese banks are now in. The other major thing that that has made the news, and I'm summarizing a lot of articles here, folks. As I said, it's, it's almost impossible now to keep up. But the other major thing that a friend of mine uh, informed me about was that it appears that the census figures in China were off and that they did not get a big bump in their population. So the, the, the so-called boom that China was expecting, uh, they overestimated the population by some 100 million people. So no boom means the, the bust is going to be even bigger. China's heading into a demographic crunch on top of everything else. So I think Mr. Xi is cleaning house here. And I think my friend, one of our, our friends that sends a lot of articles to the website from time to time, uh, I, I can only say that he's a well-placed financial advisor somewhere in the world. <laughs> okay, that's all I can say. But his take is that this may be a move to go to the Southeast Asia treaty organization countries and negotiate a deal with them in return for Taiwan, negotiate a deal with them on the South China Sea. So in other words, this may be a bit of house cleaning preparatory to a much larger diplomatic initiative. That's his view, and I think that his view has a lot of merit. Now, here's the main news of the day. Uh, I'm linking an article that is about the recent comments of the Russian Ministry of Defense. The article's titled, Two Ukrainian Firms Caught Building Dirty a Bomb, Media Blackout. Uh, this article appeared on October 25th, two days ago, uh, by Sean Adel Tabatabai. Uh, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. And I want to read this entire article to you because this article has to be taken in conjunction with everything else that we see going on in this country and in Europe. Quote, two Ukrainian firms are in the final stages of producing a dirty bomb. Chemical and Biological Protection Troops Lieutenant General Igor Kirilov told journalists on Monday. According to the information we have available, two Ukrainian organizations have concrete instructions. And here's my question, folks. Concrete instructions from whom? Zelensky? Um, I, I just can't see that this, this circus stops with Zelensky. According to the information we have available to Ukrainian organizations, have concrete instructions to create a so-called dirty bomb. Work is at the final stage, Kirilov declared. TASS.com reports the Russian Defense Ministry has data on contacts of the Ukrainian presidential office with the United Kingdom on the issue of potentially obtaining these nuclear technologies, Kirilov told a news briefing. The Kiev regime has sufficient research and production potential to make a dirty bomb, including three active nuclear power plants and large amounts of spent nuclear fuel. Quote, Ukraine has nuclear industry enterprises with stockpiles of radioactive substances that can be used to make a dirty bomb. They are three active nuclear power plants, yuzhno ukrainskaya uh, Kemelnitskaya, and Rovnenskaya, which have nine spent fuel pools that contain up to 1,500 tons of uranium oxide enriched to the level of 1.5%. Kirilov said. Now, let me stop right there. 1.5% is nowhere near the uh, purity of uranium that would be needed for a fission bomb. It's nowhere near that. And 
In this next paragraph, we learn that it's really not the right kind of uranium anyway. Continuing, he says, according to Kirillov, there are 22,000 spent fuel assemblies containing uranium-238 at the decommissioned Chernobyl nuclear power plant. It also contains products related to operation uranium-235. That uranium-235, folks, is the isotope that you would use for a uranium-fueled atomic bomb. And then plutonium-239, and of course, the article comments that these are the main components of the nuclear charge, and that's correct. If you build a plutonium bomb, you're using plutonium-239. If you're building a uranium bomb, you would use uranium-235. Most, uh, The most efficient use of a nuclear fuel would be to build, of course, a plutonium bomb. On Sunday, the Russian Defense Minister Sergei Shoigu held telephone conversations with his British, French, and Turkish counterparts as well as with the Pentagon chief. Shoigu conveyed to his colleagues concerns about the Ukraine's possible use of a dirty bomb. For her part, Russian Foreign Ministry spokeswoman Maria Zakharova spotlighted the Ukraine's nuclear blackmail. According to her, Kiev was planning to turn the Zaporozhye nuclear power plant into a dirty bomb. And folks, that would be that would be a far, far worse disaster than the Fukushima disaster in Japan of a few years ago. Now here's what I think is going on. I think we are prepping the nuclear false flag narrative to a dangerous degree. Uh, and this, I think, is in concert with the recent move of the American 101st Airborne Division to Romania. Now, another friend of ours on the website has run the following scenario through. Uh, this is what his contacts are telling him. I tend to think that the scenario has some juice, but for a rather different reason. The scenario is the Ukraine would load a dirty bomb into a missile or a bomber and fly it over the Chernobyl excluded zone. The Chernobyl zone, folks, is north of Kiev, kind of in the fork between the two rivers that are north of Kiev, the Dnieper River, of course, continuing north, and then the Pripyat going through the, through the marshy country to the north of of Kiev. But in any case, that's roughly where the Chernobyl region is. It's between Kiev and Gomel, if you know where these uh, Belarusian and Ukrainian cities are. The missile would be shot down by Russian defenses, and they're choosing the already contaminated zones so that they don't con con cause any more contamination. At that point, the Ukraine gets to, to blame Russia for shooting a, a, a nuclear missile at the Ukraine. Now, the scenario here makes no sense to me because a, a quick examination of the wreckage would tell anyone that the Russians didn't, probably did not design the bomb. If the Russians design a bomb, they don't need to design a dirty bomb. Okay, they'll, they'll, they'll use a tactical nuke and it will be an efficient reaction. So in other words... Uh, I think the West plays its hand here, overplays its hand here. But my point in pointing that out is not to deny the scenario, because I think the scenario shows just how desperate the leadership of the West really is. And they need not only to keep the distraction in the Ukraine going, there's another reason for this, and that is the, the Western leadership itself is in a major difficulty, both in the United States, in France, in Germany, uh, with the growing populist movements in all of these countries. The, the leadership class is desperate. They need a distraction, and on top of everything else, there's, there's the financial crisis going on. And we all know that Mr. Globaloni's favorite way to resolve looming financial crises is to have a big war. And the Ukraine presents a happy place to do this. Um, you know, I, I make the joke that, that the goal of the West is to fight to the last drop of Ukrainian blood. And unfortunately, that looks like it, it's the case. Um, 
I suspect that these false flag incidents will not be successful. They may try them, but I suspect that they will not be successful because there's too many people that already suspect something like this is going to happen, and there's too many people that would simply be inertia to Mr. Globalone and the accomplishment of whatever objectives he may have in mind doing this. So in other words, they're in a very, very difficult position. Uh, my personal scenario at this point is I think the Russians need to start, start taking the gloves off with their covert operations. Uh, you know, I've said for many years that covert operations is a game that two can play. It's time, it's time to take the gloves off and start playing the game because the leadership class, the current leadership class of the West, if they're even talking seriously about nuclear war, that leadership class is criminally insane, in my opinion. So that's the news, not necessarily good news, folks, but it is my take on what's going on. Remember, there's no vid chat tomorrow. I have moved that to Monday, Halloween. Uh, please remember also to get your questions and comments in by 10 o'clock U.S. Central Time tonight. Uh, if they are late, that you'll have to have them archived and resubmit them. So we will see everybody on the vid chat for the Halloween vid chat on Monday, and we'll see everybody else on the flip side. Bye-bye, everybody, and God bless.